Context means body or what just happened before and where is it going, right? Then You're talking acting, moment exactly, before, exactly want, right. need, action. Exactly right, it's acting. And, and so animators particularly are interested in that. And, and so uh, they're, they're really paying attention. So acting is more than just on the face, right? It's in the whole body. We discussed that at length on Moana. We discussed that in many other things that I worked with them on. Welcome to the podcast, Carl. I am so happy to have you here. Hi, how are you? I am well. I bet you didn't know this, but when I first met you, I was so intimidated by you. I mean, you are the master drawing teacher in all things Hollywood animation. And I remember thinking, will he ever hire me as a model? And then once we collaborated, um, we've made some real magic together with animators, don't you think? Oh, sure. I think we we have, yeah. Yeah. You, Great. You're, yeah. It, I got to read your credit to people listening, watching. Um, I didn't know that you were a film consultant on huge movies, Tangled, Harry Potter, The Polar Express, Stuart Little. Tell me, let's just let's just jump off there. Um, and then well, we'll one work of the backwards. latest ones was Moana, by the way. Moana. Moana. Yeah. How how do you do that? I already know that you teach in all the studios. You are the top go to teacher. How do you, what's the difference of, of teaching students and then having the experience of going in with the animation team? Well, to me, it's, it's basically all the same. We're looking for, uh, gee, for me, they want a sense of authenticity. Um, so, I mean, they're all very creative people. So when, if we go back to Sony image works, <clears throat> one of the first ones, uh, that I really helped with was Stuart Little. And uh, I was teaching there at Sony Image Works, and they said, will you design Stuart Little for us? Not the design itself, but how we deal with the expressions. We want him to have human expressions in human muscles. And uh, I said, okay, but I've got to do this on the side. So basically, I created all the expressions for Stuart, Stuart Little for them. Did you that base them on a, that's incredible. Did you base them on a person you know, or did it come out of your imagination? No, no, they, they gave me a basic design, which was later changed uh, a bit to suit the actor that played the part. And uh, which often happens, right? Yes, yes. But what they wanted me to do, what they first asked me to do was, we want all these different expressions, but we want, uh, we don't want to use any human muscles. I said, that's impossible. You're not going to get expressions from Stuart Little unless we, you know, kind of mix it up a bit. So we threw some of that in. And uh, basically I gave them, <clears throat> they would say, well, we want ang usual anger, happy, and so on. And <clears throat> when I looked at this, I said, well, what level of anger do you want? Do you want simmering? Mm -hmm. Do you want uh, an outward expression of anger? Do you want rage? And so basically what I did is I gave them the different levels of each of the expressions. On paper, three views, front view, side view, <clears throat> uh, three quarter view, <laughs> excuse me. And, um, and we went from there and they, they loved that. And then, and then uh, we proceeded and then I would help them with uh, Harry Potter. We worked on the troll in the first, the bathroom troll. Maybe you remember, I don't know, in the first uh, outing of Harry Potter. Wow. So uh, basically I said, you've got to have a troll that's got, he's got to feel like he has weight. So we discussed that and how to get that and so on and so forth. And then expressions. And I, I think they did a wonderful job with it. And uh I mean, if we jump ahead and we talk a little bit about Moana, they basically asked me on Moana to help them create a figure that felt authentic. And they didn't want Big Hero 6, which is basically a balloon. And, and so we went into that in some depth. We talked about 
how to create some anatomical correctness that would pay off when they were in motion, dynamically moving. And uh, and so we went round and round on that. And I prepared um, the, basically the main characters in Moana for them. Incredible. And, uh, what I hear you saying, this authenticity key, I have a lot of actors listening and those who study method acting with me know that that's where we live in authenticity. And when you talk about right. what kind of anger, of course, there's so many different mm -hmm. kinds, but is it because, and you know that I teach acting to animators, is it because they haven't studied psychology, haven't studied acting, um, is it just that you need to open their eyes to all the possible human expressions? Well, you know, there's a, I, I think there's a whole new group of people that have come in with CG. And a lot of the old timers that were working in the conventional classical sense um, said, no, I'm not going to do that. And so we've got a whole new enterprise starting with uh, CGI. And, and they had to learn how to use those tools. For instance, um, Glenn Keane asked me to come in and teach his people that were working on, at that time, called Rapunzel, which mm -hmm. became Tangled. Um, he asked me to help them uh, understand the body and how, how it moved and expressed itself. And, <clears throat> well, I tell you the truth, I went in and the tools were not developed very well. It was a time when if they raised an arm, the elbow would still be down there and they'd have to drag it up and all the rest of it. And after, you know, five minutes, I said, I can't do this. I'm not going to do this. I can't teach you how something moves when you're dealing with it on this level. You've got to recreate your rig. And I didn't do it to, inf to offend anybody. I'm just saying we've got to have we got to do a triage. We've got to have real joints for the shoulders, the elbows, wrists, things like that. And we it, they took a month and then they gave me something that we could work with. Now, what was really important was is that these guys, they all knew what they were doing. And um, it was a mix of people. And some of them were new at it and some of them were old time animators. But um, what I found was bringing we were bringing in models and they would work from the models on right on the laptop working with their rigs and again it was relatively new and um basically what i would try to help them with is creating the nuance of the expression of the action or the expression of the character and sometimes it would be very very subtle tiny tiny things but they would always get it and so we'd, we would move on like that. That's what that class was about that I, I created for uh, Glenn Keane for um, Tangle. That's just so impressive. Don't you feel the possibilities are endless because human beings are so complex and to really look at your own experiences, your own life experience in your body as a human being, don't, wouldn't that be helpful for animators to look at themselves first? Well, I, I actually think they do. And um, I mean, there is a record of them using mirrors. And um, and in my classes, by the way, I uh, one of the first things I ask people to do in the first stage, right off the get-go, is don't be cerebral, dance with the muse, whether it's from your head, whether it's from a model that you know you have on paper, or whether it's from the subject that's standing in front of you. You try to, you got to try to um, get some sort of sense of what they're doing in your own body. It's a lot more like a dance, it's empathy. But it's mm. not empathy feeling, it's empathy physical. You need to feel it physically. Um, people get the empathy emotional part, but they don't often get that there's empathy physically too. If someone takes a posture, it could be very subtle. We can still understand what they're saying with that posture, right? right? So much of the expression is in the body. So sometimes in my in my head class, where we basically we do head, hands, and feet, um, I will say, okay, look at all these expressions. 
uh, and um, we'll do we'll look at a series of expressions, and I'll say, can you tell me what that expression is? And fifty percent of the time they can't get it, nail it, hmm. because it's out of context. Context is so important. So context means body or what just happened before and where is it going right then you're talking acting moment exactly. before exactly want right. need action exactly right it's acting and and so animators particularly are interested in that and and so uh they're they're really paying attention so acting is more than just on the face right it's in the whole body we discussed that at length on Moana. We discussed that in many other things that I worked with them on and helped them with. But essentially, I go to these studios to teach skills. So I'm teaching the skills of drawing, which includes anatomy, by the way, as vocabulary. So it's really important that they understand that even the anatomy um is liquid and it has to be liquid it has to be able to move to the resonance of the dance that we're talking about the gesture if you will right in other words the subject is doing something draw what the subject is doing don't just draw a mannequin of the subject in a posture it has to breathe and if you look at glenn Keane's drawings you'll see that liquid quality mm. And his drawings are available. So I'm suggesting that if you're really interested in that, you can see it in his drawing. And that's what we were looking for. Looking for something like that, that's that when you when you conceive of it and it originates, it's the it's that fountain of energy that comes in, that it doesn't get all locked down by the armor of the body parts, that the body parts still resonate to the gesture itself. And what about mm -hmm. hiding and masking in character work when the character is hiding what they feel? I think that the, you know, that's harder to do in animation, right? Because there's so many subtle, subtle things that you get from live. Very, very hard to do. But I will say this, that it's, it perhaps can be done in a few simple cases, but without context in animation. I don't think it's going to work. You really do need context. So, so when they're hiding something or they're being subtle about something, see, one of the problems is, is that people get very enthusiastic. Artists get very enthusiastic. Well, I want them to be expressive externally, but I want them to be holding something back too, right? Well, if you get too much of that in animation, it's difficult to deliver as well as you can when you have a live action. Interesting. Acting. So when you say context in my acting world, that's place. And in the technique I teach, the Strasbourg technique, we create sensorial places. So you're asking them not only to give you a figure, but to give you a place, to give you a circumstance, and possibly a pers what we call a personal object. If it's, if it's simply a single figure, they've got to still consider all of those things. If it's a sequence... Well, obviously, they have a chance to express it in three or four continuing poses as they move. But if it's a single figure, they still have to think exactly like that. They have to think of context, place, the rest. I have my own doing... language for it, but it's the same. It's the same. Yeah. You've been doing this a very long time. How do you keep so fresh? I, I, I feel like I have studied with you because I've been in so many of your classes as the model at the Animation Guild. And, you know, I'm taking it in and I'm wondering how do you stay so patient and, and fresh? I mean, here you're working with these advanced animators and then you have brand new people coming in to the guild, right? Right. Well, first thing is I'm patient because I know what it means to be a slug in an environment where you have no real education and people have to be patient with me. So... I understand the importance of that patient to the one that's trying to learn. So if they repeat the question 50 times, I'm still going to regard it as if it's the first time. Okay, that's really, really important because we don't learn things just because I say something. It isn't, and you you say yes, 
and like you understand it, you don't really understand it yet. You've taken in the information, but it takes time for that to germinate, you know, and to produce something. Sometimes people will pop up months later, even years later and say, oh, that's what you mean, mm. right? So I, I understand from being on the other end of it. But this thing about freshness is really one of the most important things to me as a teacher. I don't do syllabus. And syllabus, I think, kills, at least from my perspective. Mm -hmm. So what I'm interested in is keeping a dialogue that's alive. So I like my students and people to interact with me, just like we're doing. It's not like I've got a certain set of things to say to you. In the, con in, the, in the context of things, it will all come out. But because we're having a conversation, it might come out one way, one time, and a different way another time, depending on how the questions and the interactions bring us to that. And to me, that keeps it alive for me. And um, it also keeps it alive for them because they're not hearing it exactly the same way every single time. Sometimes it bumps up alongside the back of the head. And then they get it. Hmm. Um, and and so to me, that's what's important is trying to keep it alive. It's a probably one of the most important questions you can ask me. Good. And, oh, uh, phew. Yeah. I mean, really. That's it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I love this uh, quote, uh, late bloomers stay fresher longer. I love Buddha, beginner's eyes. Like I love all these these paradigms for, for learning, because I know with acting, it's, it's a life journey and it's you never get, over. It's never over. And you get seasoned with time. You get better right. with time and life experience is so important. So do you find that your students who have lived broader lives, interesting lives bring more into their drawings? Or do you feel like some people just have an incredible fantasy imagination? Well, I think all that's true, but if, if we get back to the classroom situation, I've got people in my classes that that are not artists. Let's say I go to Disney, and I've got people in those classes that are not artists, but they work there. And so they want to have a sense, more of a sense of, of, of being present in the dynamic of what's going on. So they come. And then sitting right next to them, I've got somebody that's been in the business for 30 years. And the interesting thing is, is that these people still ask questions. Those are the best. Those that's, are the best. That's the secret. You know, if if Glenn comes to my class, he'll we'll talk about anatomy and he'll ask me questions. But who would ever question his anatomy? But that's not the point. He's so open that he's constantly refreshing. And the people that come to my classes do that. They're constantly refreshing. Look, they're working all day long in a certain way. It's a job. Now they come in and they can relax, open up. They can try something brand new. Uh, nobody's saying they have to do anything a certain way, but I'm offering them skills. And, you know, sometimes I'll butt in on them and say, you know, would you like this idea? And we'll work with something. And because of the way we do it, it's all it all works. It's all very friendly and it works. And um, my main thing is to not teach them how to be artists. I'm teaching them skills so that they can be artists. But I don't want to presume that I should tell them how they should be as an artist. That's very individual. Even for, I would say, you would have to agree, for the way someone decides who they are as an actor. You can't say that all actors should be this. Nope. You've got these different concepts and ideas working together. That dynamic is so interesting. Don't yes. you think? Yes, it's everything. And that's, it's the fl that's the flavor they bring to the work. And you never exactly. want to rob someone of uh, their freedom, their personality, <clears throat> their point of view. Right. Uh, it, it, in the Strasbourg work, we say art, uh, or at least Strasbourg, I should say, said art is in the choice. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. That's it. Art is in the choice. Skills, that's another thing. If I teach skills, it's, you know, if you're giving me, let's say, let's just say you're drawing a figure, but you've got 
a certain area that you always I, I conveniently overlook. And so you never really address it. Or you do some sort of fancy artifact for an area, like a hand, right? I would ask them, I say, look, I'm not interested in your personal style. If you want to learn how to draw a hand, you can't allow yourself to ignore that you're covering it up with some style that you're comfortable with. You gotta, I, I'm not interested in you doing beautiful drawings here. I'm interested in understanding. You gotta come from the inside out and no makeup, know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then as your skill level develop, develops, we get to your point, now you've got choices, right? But if you don't have that understanding, you have fewer choices. Mm -hmm. And again, that inside out, you know, is, is again in, in my repertoire um, where I like to teach animators when I do is in tapping into their own feelings and being willing to share that. Like Carl, I mean, you draw so much I you and you play a certain type of music when you teach. I feel like it's very personal to you and your selection of the mood of the class. I mean, don't you feel your own life, your own mood, your own experiences come out on that page? Oh, when I draw, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I say, I'm teaching the tools. But when you're doing your work, what you are has to come out. It's got to be part of it. These tools are simply there as a, as a support. You don't have to use a tool just because it's sitting down in front of you if it doesn't work for you, right? You could abandon all of them, but at least you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not lost, you're choosing to be in the void and to select out of chaos, create your own, uh, your own interactions, your own connections, your, right? Your own constellations, right? But so you can use something or not use something. That's why I regard anatomy as vocabulary. Just because you have all this vocabulary doesn't mean you need to use it in every single sentence that you write. You use what's necessary to express the story. Mm, eloquently said. Thank you so much. Um, for those yeah. of you who, who don't know, um, and I'm re this is all on Carl's website, uh, he's been at Walt Disney Animation for 24 years, Disney TV 23, DreamWorks 22. Um, I see that you're at Netflix now. Is that something that's current? Uh, we, we've been going back and forth. They, they're moving currently, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. And so it's um, been a back and forth thing. Okay. Yeah. And so, so animators have been relatively free during this strike, except for voiceover, correct? But, um, yeah, that. They, they've been, I guess they've had to, I'm not quite sure how that works. I'm not quite sure either. You know, I, I'm an on-camera actress and I'm not quite sure either in terms of how that's been affected. Certainly these um, studios are being picketed. Uh, you also have three books. So I think for people listening, that might be a great place to start with, hey. Carl. Yeah, and they're all available on Amazon. Uh, what are the titles of the books? They're available at Amazon. And if I don't get to it right away, go to Stuart Ng Books or Hennessy and Ingalls. Uh, one of them is called Headshots. It's basically an artist's guide to head drawing. And it has some unusual things in it. For instance, I don't start with portrait. I start with position. Mm -hmm. So understanding the position of the head, if it's up, over, to get to understand what happens to all the features when things like that happen. And a lot of people conventionally stick to front, three-quarter profile. They don't really... They can't interpret those um, more interesting angles. Mm -hmm. They don't always include them. Anyway, that's the head book. Then my sketchbook one is Spirit of the Pose, which, by the way, has an introduction by uh, Glenn Keane. And then I have Spirit in Force. It's a larger book. And um, it's a continuation of the concepts and ideas, but in, in color. But both books have tutorials in them so there's a tutorial as well as it being my sketchbook and phrases and things that i've said in class not abcs but things that help push people along and down different pathways while they're drawing and they've apparently been very important to people 
people have used my books to teach classes, they've told me. So, oh, wow. so one is Spirit and Force and Figure Drawing. One is Spirit of the Pose. And one is um, Headshots. And all this, I mean, we should give your website because I feel that's where all the okay, goodies sure. are. We so just started it? new classes. And the website is um, figuredrawingschool.com. That's simple. You and go you're in on, and you can find you're, everything. Okay, good. And you're online. You have four classes online. And These are online, yes. <clears throat> great. How perfect. You know, for people listening who live mm -hmm. all around the world, I love Zoom teaching. I think it's fantastic. And I've been very- I think there's a lot. Oh. There's a lot to it that you, you- I love being in a classroom. But there are things you can do online you can't do in a classroom. For instance, I record. So they have the opportunity to rewatch the whole lesson. Plus, I have them send me their work. And I'll work on that work. Everybody gets to watch because we're live. I have a live model, right? These are things that really fill it out and offer, a, a, I think, a really great opportunity for advancing your drawing skills quickly. Yes. I do too. And I've been in your classes and they're, they're just as fun. And I, I'm surprised how much we've accomplished, especially, you know, I usually do costume with you or the head hands and drawing. Sure. And I appreciate that. I know you're calling me in because I'm an actress and that you're going to get a lot of expression from me. That's right. Yeah. You're an expert. So, well, I don't know about that, but so, so we've discussed how acting it plays such a big role in animation um, and I guess I'm going to throw it out to you, like I do to all my guests, advice from you for actors. Advice for actors? Yeah, advice for actors in terms of actors that are um, working in voiceover on animation, uh, want to go into this field. What would you mm. suggest? <clears throat> well, gosh, there's so many ways to consider that, but just bottom line, I think that one needs to find the right resonance in the body that you're comfortable with. And that and that, that will be the closest state of authenticity that you can start from. And then if you listen and allow your personality to be the drum through which you perform, then, uh, I think you're in the right place. You don't get lost in the surface, but that you're you're always coming from this place that that keeps you in contact uh, with the planet, so to speak. Mm. And even if you're playing a crazy character, like I rewatched Ed Harris doing, um, uh, oh, the artist mm, Jackson Pollock, mm. and God, he's just brilliant. I mean, it's not a fun movie to watch. He was a very complicated, difficult human being. But he was also an astonishing artist. So he was this astonishing artist that produced this wonderful work and at the same time was so broken. And Ed Harris was able to do both. And uh, he just never brings a false note into it. And it's the kind of movie you say, oh, this is just too much. You'd want to turn it off. We were watching this and we wanted to eat. We we never once stopped until we finished that movie before we got up to eat. None of us totally liked what we were seeing, but it was so brilliant at the same time because he was able to give us both the highest moment and the lowest moment in the same moment. And okay, so there's an example. Beautiful, beautiful, Carl. You're so rich. Your teaching is so rich. What, what, uh, an honor for anyone who studies with you to get a deeper experience of what's possible in art in in creation. Uh, one last question that I've always been curious about: When did you begin as an artist? Did someone mentor you, or did you find it on your own? Oh, okay. I'll give you a, a quick little story. 
uh, when I was a child, I didn't know what I was or what I was doing. I scribbled around like most kids. But for some reason, my social studies teacher in grade school said, I would like you to do a mural in the room of the seven wonders of the world. Except I don't want you to do it. I want you to direct the rest of the class to do it. Okay. Why? How? I, I don't know. I don't know why you picked me, but apparently. And then the art teacher in that school asked me to actually do like a really huge mural in the in the lunchroom. So they saw something in you. I was up on scaffolding. I had no idea why. I think by the time I was in junior high, I understood. So I was in the you know, boys metal work and woodwork. And they came in one day and they said, there's two positions open for boys in the art class. And who wants to go? Everybody raised their hands. So they flipped coins. I won the coin flip out of two people. Once I got into that class, every time the teacher was out of the room, everyone would come over and put their work on my desk. And I would fix their work before the teacher came in. That's in junior high school, right? And you're still doing the same thing. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. And and so it just kind of grew. I, you know, uh, I'm from Detroit or just outside of Detroit. So as a young kid, I didn't, you know, I had no ego about this. I just did it. And then people responded to it. But I never thought of it as a living. Uh, I thought maybe I would end up on the assembly line down in Detroit someplace, you know. But it ended up that I went to, you know, I got out of school, went down to Detroit to school for art school for a couple of years. And then I came out to California. I, I worked at Art Center until I was able to see, no, this isn't my direction. I need these teachers, not these teachers. And so I began to orchestrate my education to get understanding of drawing not just how to play. I already knew how to play. I didn't need anyone to show me how to play and be creative. I wanted skills. And so I do that to this day. I teach skills. If, if, if people want artistry in my room, I'm not saying don't do it, but I'm saying I'm probably going to be more or less hands off on that. Oh, that's beautiful. Go ahead. Or, oh, you know what you're doing with that? You're covering up the fact that you don't have any understanding over here. So if you don't mind, stop doing that and roll your sleeves up and go for this. I don't care if it's ugly. You've got nothing to prove to me, right? What you want is to be able to take at least one step forward. And then your artistry belongs to you. No one should be telling you what you should be doing. Just opportunities and choices. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Oh, Carl, I feel like we've really oh. gotten to know you better today. This is fabulous. That's great. This was fun. And I, I should I'm probably a say my yeah. classes, we just started, we're a weekend. If anybody's really interested, you can come in, you can get a recording of the first week and we can move on. So if you would like to, it's again, figuredrawingschool.com. Okay. And also a lot of people are on Instagram uh, where should they find you there? Uh, well, I do have an Instagram. Uh, I don't, what do you, you type yeah, in? My yeah, name yeah, just type in his name. Yeah, we'll, we'll put all the information on the podcast right. um, so you can hear that. But, you know, sure. uh, when you're ready to find the teacher, you do. And, yeah. yep, and the student appears and uh, I have so much respect for you. And you have left and continue to leave such a huge legacy in Hollywood, that kid from Detroit who was doing murals. So yeah. <laughs> much respect. It's been so much fun. Thank you so oh, this much, Carl. Really, really, really great, uh, Rachel. I really enjoyed this. Great. Thank and, you. And uh, if that's it, I'll be seeing you soon, I hope. Very soon. Very soon. Thank you so much, Carl, for taking us into the inner sanctum of animation and creativity. If you'd like to hear more of my podcasts, please go to my website at diaryofanactress.com. Until the next time, stay inspired.